okay so this is lecture 1 so today what we will do is we will actually so see some of the practical examples of machine learning and just and and the idea is to motivate you and to show you that what kind of state of the art uh, you know today uh, the applications are reached so so basically we have to we will see some of the practical applications and uh, we will see what what is the state of the art so in the last lecture i started out with this like uh, this video and this is uh, you know amazon go so it's like one of the online shopping centers in us so uh, let me play this video and show you that what kind of technology these people are using and basically all these technologies which are used in the back of this particular video are machine learning and deep learning and some of the other latest state of the art techniques like natural language processing so let me play this video for you people and see you know where the technology is uh, so let me know if uh, if the voice is not clear or you know uh, if if some something troubles you in viewing it let me play this video now we started to wonder what would shopping look like if you could walk into a store grab what you want and just go what if we could weave the most advanced machine learning computer vision and AI into the very fabric of a store so you never have to wait in line no lines no checkouts no registers welcome to Amazon go Use the Amazon Go app to enter. Then put away your phone and start shopping. It's really that simple. Take whatever you like. Anything you pick up is automatically added to your virtual cart. If you change your mind about that cupcake, just put it back. Our technology will update your virtual cart automatically. Yes, sir. It has a lot of... So, how does it work? We use uh, any questions? Is the voice? Sir, the video is visible to us, and uh, we cannot even see it properly. Oh, so video is not visible to you? And the audio is not uh, there. Oh, audio okay. is not clear. Oh, audio is not clear. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe because <laughs> the speed it the speed at which it is playing, I guess maybe your internet connection is not. able to play it properly i guess is it the same problem with all of other people uh, yes, yes sir, sir. Uh, yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir uh what are you saying can you repeat again please if you can send us the video yeah yeah, yeah. i will send it uh, i will i will send it because it's already recording so i will upload the recording at that time you can see you know the video will be at its uh, you know perfect rate so you can watch that at that time okay but uh, okay but as you know it's a part of this you know series so just watch it and see what's going on i will try to i will try to see if it i can do it properly for you guys but wait and watch you know just see the video and uh, maybe after once i upload it on the internet you can watch it again okay at that time yes sir okay so this particular is uh, so okay i will stop this video in a while but Uh, what is going on here is basically uh, this girl or whatever boy who is there in the supermarket they are trying to actually take the products without uh, without you know without any intervention so what they are doing is they are just taking the products and they are taking uh, straight away outside without any checkouts so what is happening automate what is happening is that these products are automatically you know entered into the bill list of Uh, of the person concerned because they have opened their app so in their personal app all these products will be added one by one and it will be checked out once they move outside the store so what it is showing you is that there is an automated stuff going on here with no persons who are billing you know there will be no person who will bill this thing up they will buy the product and straight away they will go outside without any lines without any payment so it will be done automatically So this is this video is all about that. So let me play this. Use computer vision, deep learning algorithms, and sensor fusion, much like you'd find in self-driving cars. We call it just walk out technology. Once you've got everything you want, you can just go. When you leave, our just walk out technology adds up your virtual cart and charges your Amazon account. 
your receipt is sent straight to the app, and you can keep going. Amazon Go. No lines, no checkout. No, seriously. So this is basically no lines. <coughs> Sorry, uh, no no lines and no checkouts. So this video was basically from Amazon. <coughs> Sorry for this. And uh, in the next video, I will show you a video of Google Duplex. So it's again one of the uh, very famous technology uh, used uh, in this particular. Uh, uh, device which is natural language processing I don't know whether you have heard it about not but this natural language processing is used as one of the main uh, 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 work around for this Google duplex so let me play this video also for you and uh, you, you can see like you know what's going on here and and uh, so are you able to see the video uh, I, I can understand that uh, it's difficult to hear the voice but are you able to see the video properly or not Yes, sir. Okay. But voice is not clear, right? Yeah, exactly, sir. Okay, okay. Okay, so let me play this video. So this video actually is all about like, you know, a person is fixing an appointment uh, uh, for hair cutting and, uh, you know, the person who, who is sitting on that side, other side uh, in the saloon is not a person. He uh, It's a chatbot. So uh, it will, you know, uh, reply to your questions uh, depending upon what kind of questions you are asking and it's not a person on the other side so they are trying to show that how you can actually use natural language processing uh, for creating the chat bots so this example is uh, you know trying to show you that so let me play this video for you people the promise of the assistant as i said earlier our vision for our assistant is to help you get things done it turns out a big part of getting things done is making a phone call. You may want to get an oil change schedule, maybe call a plumber in the middle of the week, or even schedule a haircut appointment. You know, we are working hard to help users through those moments. We want to connect users to businesses in a good way. Businesses actually rely a lot on this, but even in the US, 60% of small businesses don't have an online booking system set up. We think AI can help with this problem. So let's go back to this example. Let's say you want to ask Google to make you a haircut appointment on Tuesday between 10 and noon. What happens is the Google Assistant makes the call seamlessly in the background for you. So what you're going to hear is the Google Assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule the appointment for you. Let's listen. Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. So I can need one second. Mm-hmm. So at what time are you looking for a while? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1.15. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's your first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks. Great. Have a great day. Bye. So uh, you can see like how uh, this uh, uh, p person on the right side was not an actual person, it was a chat bot. And I think now you uh, you must have also seen in your real life experiences also that there is some person on the right uh, on the other side which is a chat bot. For example, if you want to buy something on Amazon and if you want to ask for some help, so initially what will happen is that these companies will start a chatbot first so that you know if if your query is not that expertized like if you do not want to go into the details of something then chatbot will be more than enough for you to you know solve your problems so i don't know whether you have encountered this or not can anyone tell their experience on this like uh, has anyone encountered these type of 
सिचुएशंस वेयर दे हैव यू नो यू नो चैटेड विद अ चैट बॉट ऑन द अदर साइड एनी वन नो वन एक्सपीरियंस डिट ओके सो 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 दिस इज द फर्स्ट टाइम यू आर सीइंग दिस राइट एनी एनी आंसर्स फ्रॉम योर साइड like i don't want to you to or say this this is the first experience or you have seen it before like something like this yes yeah, so there is a in hike app there is a natasha khosal to to chat with uh can you repeat what you are saying so in hike application okay uh, there is a uh, chatbot called natasha Ah uh, right right so something like that you know you must have seen it because you know sometimes for example if you want to fix an appointment in a hospital so uh, at that time what you will see is you know some chat bots will be there and they will help you out in navigating to your for your queries until unless you are uh, you know too much specific in your query then only they will connect you to a real person otherwise most of the queries will be answered by these chat bots so this is the you know upcoming trend which is happening nowadays so so this is basic, what is the ad, what is the advantage of you know uh, employing these chatbots can anyone tell me like what advantage it it will have like if you have these chatbots uh um uh, installed for less users uh well uh, human yes so basically it will uh, you know employ less humans and uh, you know and uh, because sometimes you know humans are uh, you know they they become lazy also depends upon their you know depends upon the depends upon their mood sometimes you know so these chatbots are always working and uh, you know they will always attend to the calls and so that is the advantage of having these chatbots so this is one of the examples now uh, i will show you another example which is the netflix recommendation example so here i am you know uh, Uh, i have pasted a uh, uh, mi tv's uh, front wall which we call as patch wall so if you see here or maybe in your tvs also you must have seen this so can you tell me what exactly is going on in this particular uh, wallpaper so maybe uh, in your tvs also you will see something like this right so can you explain me what's going on here like what is the objective of having this patch wall uh, concept or uh, you know in these smart tvs can anyone tell me you must have seen this right in your smart tvs at home like uh, you will have all these uh, you know uh, advertisements going on here so can anyone tell me what exactly they are trying to do here okay i will tell you so similar watch uh, sorry like can you can you repeat these are tvs with same uh, genre yes so so they are trying to actually show you the same content which you are actually liking so the type of content which you will like so for example if you are you know if you if you watch a action movie so it will try to show you some related action movies based on your experience so so that is actually the main concept of these patch walls in mitv and for uh, in specifically netflix recommendation or amazon prime recommendation so if you have purchased you know some of these memberships like for netflix and amazon so once you open these uh, you know apps what you will see is a similar content uh, you know similar content uh, uh, which you like so if you if you like action movies so it will show you some action movies related to what you normally watch so this is basically an example of machine learning so in behind behind these uh, you know uh, behind these uh, interfaces actually machine learning algorithms are you know um, going around and uh, they will try to see your activities and based on that activities they will give you you know recommendations like okay you can watch this movie or you can watch this movie depending upon the action interest if you have so if you like suspense movies then it will try to show you suspense movies so so they are trying to you know keep on uh, uh, spying you basically they will try to spy your activities how you are you know working around on tv so so these these are the specific points which they actually follow uh, while creating these patch walls and you know recommendation apps so what they do is basically they will try to see your interaction with their services like you know by you, by watching your history they and how you are rating their titles so they will actually 
learn the interaction between uh, you and their apps and how other members uh, are actually uh, if they are having the similar taste and preferences they will keep track of that also so maybe your friends also like you know action movies so they will keep track of their taste and preferences also and based on their preferences and your preferences they will try to create a cluster of preferences so so that's why you will you know keep on uh, you will keep on seeing that in, on youtube you will get some videos which are you know of your interest so that that comes because they are keep on because they are keeping a track of your you know activities so what kind of preferences you have so they will try to show you that similar thing and in addition to uh, all these three important points they will uh, also see that at what time you are actually watching and on which device you are watching and how long you are watching so all these are basically the you know features so we will come to these features part in the coming slides but they are the features which they are using as their input to the machine learning model so if somebody ask you what are features i will tell you the exact definition of that in coming slides but these are the real features that they will um, you know use for machine learning because uh, you know they are this is the practical example all these are features so they will use this to estimate what kind of content you want to look for so i will come back to this example again but keep note that these are the practical example this this is the practical example where you have these practical features not the artificially cooked features okay so in the next video i will show you you know another application of uh, deep learning computer vision and natural language processing also and this is i think most of you must be knowing it this is self driving cars how many of you know about this uh, regarding self driving cars so how many of you know can you raise the hand regarding if you do not want to answer okay oh a lot of people knows this okay yeah good that's good so this is again one of the uh, one of the best examples of the latest technology and they are improving upon it and uh, uh, let me show you a small video of it driving requires a lot from us all just to get around we can do better what if the world's most experienced driver was at your fingertips a fully self-driving car ready to take you where you need to go a ride designed for you giving you more time for the things that matter most What if getting there felt like being there? This is where we're going. Introducing the self-driving service. Waymo 1. So, so you can see that this is one of the companies who are actually working on self-driving cars. Um, right now, uh, it's it's reaching to their you know potential, but they still require you know some some regulatory uh, um, permissions from the government, especially outside, not in India. So they are still working on it. But let let me show you another video, and then we will uh, we will see some other aspects of machine learning. So. So, uh, so th this is basically showing you uh, the role of machine learning in agricultural farms. So now again, I will show you one video, and you can see how people are using machine learning for, you know, simplifying their life in agricultural farms. So let me show you this.
So, so what you have observed here, like what kind of uh, technologies they are using in this robot? Can anyone tell me, like what kind of uh, algorithms they are using? I know you don't know these algorithms in detail, but uh, maybe you, some, some of you may have an idea of. Can anyone tell? Okay, so I'll tell you that you know if you see here, uh, if you see here, you can see some white uh, you know rounds around the apple, right? So what they are doing is they are using object detection. So this object detection is again one of the recent uh, techniques that people use in deep learning. So it's not covered in machine learning, but once you finish off with machine learning, then you will be ready to go for deep learning. So in deep learning course, you will see uh, these type of uh, advanced techniques where people detect uh, fruits. So it's detecting fruits compared to the other areas over around, right? You have leaves also, and then you have wood also. So it tries to detect the fruits here. So once it detects the fruits, so robots are actually trained to actually capture these fruits. So this is basically one of the object detection algorithm which is running in uh, in in your in in robots. Similarly, if you see here, uh, you can see uh, you know it's detecting this crop over here, and this is basically giving you a, a you know confidence that this particular algorithm is detecting that this is that crop. So it is showing you that it's 99.9% .9 accurate, and it's creating a bounding box across this crop. And this is basically done through another advanced algorithm which we call as YOLO, which is you look only once. So that algorithm is again one of the state of the art object detection algorithm which is uh, again uh, in the area of deep learning. So that will not be covered here but this is giving you a motivation that where we are heading towards. So, so this is your starting point but once you finish off with this course then you will be confident enough to go for deep learning course where you will see all these type of object detection algorithms which are going in the robots so again this is you know applied in farming so people are using machine learning and deep learning in various areas of application which i have shown you now so let me ask you one question once we finish off with the success stories are there any failure stories can you think of any failure stories that you, you can have from these machine learning and deep learning architectures can anyone tell me like these are all success stories which i have shown you but it's not like that right word is word is not uh, as perfect as we think there are some situations where you know it's not perfect so can you can you ex tell me that uh, are there any failure stories also uh, uh, have you heard about that any one of you have you heard about any failure stories of machine learning or deep learning or always you have heard about success stories only anyone okay so uh, am i audible to all of you just wanted oh, to yes, check sir. yeah yes, okay so yes, so today i will show you some failure stories also so that you should not be you know completely driven by these techniques like you know you should not think that okay machine learning and deep learnings are whenever you apply them in some tech uh, in, in some technology it will always success it's not like that so let me show you the failure stories also which is basically the downside of this particular technology so the first one which i will show you is the self-driving car itself and it will tell you what happened when self-driving car was used uh, and actually uh, let me show you this clip and then you will realize what happened to the deadly crash the car on autopilot using advanced technology a big feature of the tesla vehicle in question is that it allows drivers to let go of the wheel abc's marcy gonzalez on what the company says went wrong tonight tesla confirming this car was in autopilot mode when it crashed in northern california killing the driver Walter Wong was behind the wheel of the nearly $80,000 car heading into work at Apple just before 9.30 a.m. March 23rd. Tesla saying the Model X sent Wong several warnings to put his hands on the wheel earlier in the drive, but his hands were not detected on the wheel for six seconds prior to the collision. The car slamming into this barrier. Wong's brother telling ABC station KGO the 38-year-old engineer had complained seven to ten times the car would swivel toward that same exact barrier during autopilot. Walter took it into a dealership addressing the issue, but they couldn't duplicate it there. That information has been received by the CHP. They've been acting on it for some time now. Tesla saying its drivers make more than 200 successful autopilot trips per day on this exact stretch of road. 
going on to blame that highway barrier that's meant to reduce impact. Tesla says this is what it's supposed to look like, but this is what it looked like the day before Wong's deadly crash because of a previous accident. Loved ones saying it should have saved the father of two's life. She just did like everything awesome that you should do as a dad, he did. And the NTSB is investigating this crash saying getting answers could take up to six months. So you can see now, right, uh, this, uh, the, the failure stories of the self-driving car, which is the current state of the art. So you can see how, you know, if, the, if something changes on the road, uh, it, it can create problems for self-driving car to detect it. So have you seen this video, right? So, okay. so, uh, so this is the basic drawback, you know, or this, you know, failure stories of the machine learning. So you cannot say that if you are using these technologies, it will really help your life. It depends, like, you know, um, to which uh, extent you are actually using them. Like if they are directly related to the, uh, uh, to the life of the person, then surely it will, it, you have to make it totally robust so that there should be no errors. But here you can see even the company, Tesla company, which is one of the top companies in the self-driving car are, you know, still getting these type of news where Tesla is getting crashed on the highway. So this is one of the, one of the failure stories. I will show you another failure story now. So please see this. It got me thinking about my full-time employees. And so this application is basically face swapping. So uh, President Obama, Obama is speaking something. But now what will happen is somebody else will actually impersonate pro, uh, uh, President Obama and he will speak and President Obama will mimic that. So it's called as deep fake technology, which is basically uh, the current state of the art uh, application, which is uh, used in deep learning. So you will see in this video that uh, once the uh, uh, that person will actually control the President Obama and whatever he will speak, President Obama will speak in that way. And you will and you will think that it is President Obama who is speaking. So let me show this video to you. Their ability to survive on eight dollars an hour in New York City, and foremost in all of our minds, has been the loss and the grief felt by the people of Orlando. Most of us don't get our health care through the marketplace. We get it through our job, or through Medicare or Medicare. And what you should know is that, thanks to the Affordable Care Act, your coverage is better today than it was before. Women can get free checkups, and you can't get charged more just for being a woman give his employees all together to pass a common there's a bill that would boost America's very, very hard times. Some progress, at least in, within the small confines of the legal community. I think it's real important. Uh, here we go. Uh, President Barack Obama, uh, when you uh, giving a speech, uh, make... So you can see how this person is actually controlling his, uh, you know, lips movement onto President Obama. You, you, uh, a lot of pauses. America's businesses have created 14.5 million new jobs over 75 straight months. When we are developing technology, every technology can be used um, in some negative way, and so we all should work towards uh, making sure that it's not going to happen. And uh, even um, one of the interesting directions is that once you know how to create something, you know how to reverse engineer it. And so you can. Um, uh, and so one could um, uh, create methods for identifying um, uh, edited videos versus um, real videos. So now you have seen this, right? So somebody can impersonate President Obama's voice and then, you know, uh, okay, no problem. If it is not audible, do not worry. Uh, I will upload you. Uh, I will upload the lectures, right? So you can watch after once this lecture is over. Okay. Yeah, all these... Uh, Things which uh, this person has written is also one might be the possible cause of you know failures. So we have to be extra cautious in designing these systems because all these uh, you know inputs which uh, you know Tesla is taking it might create problems uh, and can create accidents also on road. So we have to be very careful with these technologies. So this particular video which I had shown you uh, is basically a deep fake video where President Obama is not speaking, somebody else is speaking and they have impersonated uh, his lips onto President Obama's lips and uh, whatever he is speaking, it looks like that President Obama is speaking in uh, and he is uh, telling his views. But it's not President Obama's views, it's somebody else's views. So that is deep fake and again it's a, one of the dangerous 
you know uh, things which is happening nowadays people are putting some somebody's else face uh, some somebody's uh, people are you know using their voice on somebody's uh, you know uh, voice and it's a it's a real uh, uh, you know dangerous situation so we have to be careful with these technologies and again there is one more uh, failure story here you can see how search results which you are doing on google it it they are biased so i will show you the video and then you will uh, then you will you know yourself realize that search results are also biased so let me show you this video and you can you know yourself interpret that how how this is happening so this is the latest video in the court where google uh, was summoned and actually the the judge is asking questions to the you know google ceo and uh, and you can see the debate how it's happening manipulation of search results i think it's important to talk about how search works um, right now if you google the word idiot under images a picture of donald trump comes up i just did that how would that happen how does search work so that that would occur we provide search today uh, for any time you type in a keyword. Uh, we, uh, as Google, we have crawled, we've gone out and crawled and stored billion, copies of billions of web pages in our index, and we take the keyword and match it against web pages and rank them based on over 200 signals. Things like relevance, freshness, popularity, how other people are using it. And, and based on that, you know, at any given time, uh, we try to rank and find the best results for that query. And then we evaluate them with external raters uh, to make sure that, uh, and they evaluate it to objective guidelines. And, and that's how we make sure the process is working. So it's not some little man sitting behind the curtain figuring out what we're going to show the user. It's basically a compilation of what users are generating and trying to sort through that information. Uh, last year we served over three trillion searches and uh, just, just as a fact, every single day, 15% of the searches Google sees, we have never seen them before. So, uh, so th this is working at scale and you know, we don't you know, manually intervene on any particular search result. I, I would just like to note from time to time... My so you can see now like how you know the uh, in in this court hearing uh, uh, it's difficult to actually convince the judge also because they want to know like how come when they type idiot onto the screen why donald trump's picture comes into you know into play so they want to know this answer and they they are suspecting that you know somebody from the from the from the uh, you know some some person is actually doing it so they don't know how this technology works but you can see how search results can create biases so if you know if you type idiot and you if you type if you type you know uh, and and the, if, if there are some searches where you know idiot is linked to um, linked to trump so what search result will do is they will de it will definitely you know pick the trump's uh, image because um, in search result they are uh, this particular searching is not applying its own mind it's not saying that if idiot is there then it will not be a trump it will ca it ca it's a general question which people are asking that what's the meaning of it but what happens is search result is actually linking the idiot word with the trump image because some people in the world have you know um, you know kept uh, you know wrote something on his image so what happens is this searching is trying to find a relation between an image and the and the keyword idiot so uh, this actually creates a bias so machine learning is are very biased and we have to take care of that also that whatever you are searching machine learning should be capable of not providing the biased results so if you are typing idiot means machine learning should give you the meaning of that and not the image of uh, donald trump so that is uh, again one of the drawbacks of machine learning that it creates sometimes biases also and if these type of situations happen you can see how uh, you know difficult and what consequences it can have onto the company as you can see google is right now 
sitting in front of the court and answering the answering to these questions and you can know and you can realize that it's difficult to explain all these things to a non technical person so i hope now you understand that machine learning is not uh, always uh, you know uh, best thing to do but we have to actually you know uh, see the draw, uh, drawbacks and the other sides of this story that is machine learning is not always successful but we have to be very careful in implementing them in the technologies which we are using so so this is basically uh, a small presentation on to the various applications that machine learning is having and what are the drawbacks also so please note once you go into these companies uh, it's not that it, it it will always create a success story it might be the case that you can have you know failure stories also so keep this in mind and create these systems which are actually ethical so try to you know work around keeping these videos in mind okay so this uh, finishes off with the introduction to machine learning what is the state of the art in which we are and what are the drawbacks of this machine learning so let me come back to these slides here and give you more details about the content of the course so uh, any any questions related to the earlier videos which i have shown any questions okay so if there are no questions so i hope these videos must have given you enough motivation to study this subject so let me start the machine learning uh, lecture today officially so uh, in this slide what we are trying to show you is the basic definition like what is machine learning exactly so machine learning if you read to this you know statement what it is saying is machine learning algorithms develop some mathematical model based on the sample data which we known as a training data i will explain what training data is in a in a coming slides but what happens is it's trying to build a mathematical model out of the training data so that once this mathematical model is created you can make predictions or decisions without being explicitly programming without using that so what it is trying to say is that for example if you have this data which is available here so you can see it's a strings of ones and zeros so you are not able to judge what's going on here so what happens is these strings of ones and zeros are the training data so this is basically called as the training data this is basically a training data so what happens is this machine learning what it tries to do is it tries to find out uh, you know the function which is actually generating this training data it tries to find out that so it tries to find out the function fx which is unknown to you you do not know what this you know function is which is trying to generate this data so the role of machine learning is to come up with the mathematical model which we call as fx so that if you feed something here you know if you feed something here like you know some data 10101 let us say if you feed this it will give you some results we will see what kind of results we are looking for but it will give you some results yes or no let us say so if we are building a data which gives us uh, answers in the format of yes and no so what we are trying to say is to come up with a function fx of this complex data so that once we you know feed in uh, extra information into it we want to know whether this machine is yes or no so we want to know some sort of decisions or predictions we will come to all these things in a coming slides i know it's a bit uh, confusing to understand what's going on here but once we go more into the details then you will realize all these things will make sense so the role of machine learning is to come up with the function which is actually hidden inside this training data and it's difficult for the normal person to actually come up with the function by observing here and write mathematical equations for that it's very difficult you cannot write mathematical equation for this uh, by looking into these numbers and say okay uh, this is the equation let us say and uh, you know once you feed a value of x here you will get something out as yes or no it's very difficult so machine learning tries to machine learning help us in uh, you know uh, recognizing what function is lying behind this training data so that they can make some predictions like decisions like yes or no or make some predictions out of this function fx so this is basically the main purpose of machine learning so any questions here in this slide 
okay no sir so so this is just showing you a small diagram for that so here we have a training data which i am you know denoting it by a bucket so this we have lot of data inside this training data so let us say we have you know images inside this training data so images like like for example cat and dog so we have you know uh, multiple images of cats multiple images of dog so basically all these images will be inside this container and we are calling this as a data set d so what is this m m is basically the model which will learn these images so once you feed this uh, images into this model what will happen this model will learn what this model will learn the function fx what this function fx is doing this function fx will actually predict whether it's a dog image or whether it's a cat image so once this model generates a function fx then what we can do is we can use inferences what what do you mean by inference uh, inference means you will feed something here now as the image and you want to know whether this function will give you answer as dog or as cat so basically this particular uh, thing where you are feeding the image into this function and getting the result out this process is basically called as inference so by inference means you are inferring inferring the data like uh, you know whether this is a cat or a dog image and the important part is this function f so uh, you can realize that these cats and dog images if there are millions of cats and dog images then how will you draw a function boundary for that it's very difficult for a human person to do it so this function fx is created by the model m which tries to distinguish cats and dog images and it will be used as the inference model once you pass in the test image into this function fx it will give you back the prediction score prediction score so the so the function fx is designed by this model m which is a machine learning model so let us go to the uh, step by step procedure of machine learning algorithms so the first step that is involved in machine learning algorithms is data collection this is the first step so you have to collect the data based on which application you are working on the second is the feature design we will discuss this also as i as you recall in the netflix recommendation app i was telling you right that all these are features practical features please keep that in mind that 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 feature design is the same feature design which is over here the third step is model training we will understand all these things and the fourth step is model validation which is also called as inference which i was discussing in the last slide and what is model training model training is nothing but coming up with the function fx which we were discussing in the last slide this one this function fx so we are when we are when we are saying that we are training the model it means we are actually coming up with the inherent function fx which can distinguish between different images so model training means coming up with the function fx and inference means how you can if you feed something here what answers it will give you is basically the inference or it is also called as model validation so uh, or it is also called as testing so all these terms are same okay inference testing validation so all these things are same so now let us discuss each of these steps one by one and see how we can you know create a story out of it so most of the machine learning algorithms which you will see in this course will actually rely on all these four steps only there is nothing fancy about the machine learning most of the uh, algorithms which you will study will be like you know will be a combination of all these four steps only and there is nothing else as you know fifth step or in between there are any steps no these are the main steps which are involved in machine learning algorithm so let us go with step 1 first which is data collection 
so here we are trying to distinguish cats from dogs so we want our machine learning to distinguish cats from dogs so let us do this particular example and see how we can do that in a very high level view we will go into the details of the mathematics part in the coming slides or uh, in the next lecture but right now i am giving you a complete overview a complete picture of what will happen in this course so that you will get a complete picture of the complete course today in the first lecture itself so the first step is data collection so we are trying to distinguish cats from dogs so what will happen is we will collect we will what we will do is we will collect cats images various cats images you can see over here and we will connect collect the various dog images also which is shown in the uh, last row so this these are the cats and these are the these are dog images okay so now this part is over that is data collection part is over now the second part is what second part is feature design so let us understand why people came up with this idea of feature design why feature design is important so before uh, you know uh, before uh, when machine learning uh, area was uh, starting up at that time what happened was uh, scientists were thinking like you know how to how to make a model how to make machine learning model so that it can detect cats and dogs automatically so what happened is that these scientists they have gone to the doctors and they asked doctors that you know can you please tell us like what what's going on in our brain when we see these images so they they were they wanted to understand that what's going on in our brain so that we can we replicate that same thing in the model so that we can also distinguish uh, cats and dogs uh, using the machine learning model as we do ourselves so when they went to the doctors doctors told them that in certain part of the brain here there is there are some specific points here in the brain which tries to detect you know some special features of these images so our brain will not see the complete image as such but it will see some special features of these of this image so for example this image will be seen in three parts first part second part and third part so it will be seen in three parts so this particular uh, so our brain will see this image our brain will see this image also and this image also and then it will combine all these three together to form this image in our mind but the important point is that for example for this particular image it will see most of the content in this image will have this type of edge so if you if you observe this image you will have all these edges in the slanting direction so the prominent uh, feature that you will see in this edge in this image will be uh, you know lines which are this way oriented in the second image it will see lines which are this way oriented in the third image it will see lines which are oriented in this fashion so what is these what are, what are these thing three things these three things are basically they are called as features so what uh, they what they told to the scientist is that uh, you know our brain is actually reading the features not the image so based on these motivation based on these mo based on this motivation that you know uh, the machine learning models are relying on features they come up with this step of designing the features so that's why you know uh, uh this is the step which is called as feature design any questions here till now no sir okay no, okay sir. okay so this is basically the motivation like why we want to have features in the machine learning so for this particular example if you want to separate cats from dogs what is the uh, uh, two features that they are using they are using nose size and ear shape so you know that most of the most of the cats will have small nose and as the nose size increases you know that most of the dogs will have long nose so they have taken this as a feature because they know that if they take nose size as one of the features they can separate the two images based on the size of the images so size of the nose but if you take one more feature then what will happen is the separation of the classes will become more 
For example, if you take only this single feature, it might be the case that some of the cats will also have large nose. So it might be the case that you know one image of cat can come here and it has you know large nose. So in order to avoid this type of situation, they have come up with another feature which is called as ear shape. So ear shapes are basically taken from round to pointy. So you can you can yourself uh, think that you know most of the cat images have pointy shape ears. So you know that you know uh, and it's rare that the cats uh, it, it's very rare that dogs will have pointy ears. So taking these two features into account the two classes that is the dog class as well as the cat class will be separated. You can see now there is a separation. <coughs> so if if i if i would have taken the ear shape as only the single feature then it might be the case that your dogs will also you know some of the dogs will have pointy ears and it will lie here but because of this uh, nose size feature this will move to this side you know it might uh, so that, that that actually creates a robustness it the more features you take the more distance it will create between the two classes but it's not always generally true but still you know it is very you know good to have more features for the machine learning problem the lesser the number of features the more problem it will create because then it's very difficult to separate these classes from one one class to the second class so this is first class this is the second class any questions here related to this so this is basically the first feature f1 and this is the second feature f2 so so you can see you can bring on some other features also for example you can take eyes color also as a feature so if you take eyes color as a feature then mostly you know uh, uh, cat images will ha cat will have you know um, you know greenish eyes rather than you know brown eyes and most of the dogs will have brown and black eyes so based on that also you can further separate these classes to you know the distance between these classes can be increased more if you try to incorporate another feature which we call as f3 in the third dimension and that can be eyes color so it will by adding this feature will sep make the distance between these two classes more so the more you bring in the more better the machine learning algorithm will be but we will see later on that sometimes we have too many features and we want to reduce the features also that is also a problem you know when we will deal it will deal with them in the later uh, you know part of the course so that is called as dimensionality reduction algorithms where we reduce the dimensions here the dimensions are right now three f1 f1 f2 and f3 here the three here the dimensions are three but there are some situations where you know features are you know thousand and we want to reduce it to hundred or ten so there are some situations like that also we will see that in the coming courses so where we so in these type of applications we go for dimensionality reduction algorithms okay so now we have feature design as the second stage done so now it comes with third step which is called as model training or coming up with the function fx that is what we were discussing when we started out our lecture so model training is nothing but to come up with the function fx and this is the function which i am telling you this is the function fx so here you can see it's a straight line it's a straight line with a slope here and it uh, sorry with an intercept here and a slope some slope so this function is called as fx so it's basically acting as a boundary between the two classes c1 and c2 so it's a boundary in between them this is c1 and this is c2 if it is let us say so this line is a boundary in between the two so what what, what is my model training model training is nothing but coming up with this function fx which can separate these two classes so once we have this function fx created then we can go for validation or testing data set and we will see how we can do testing now once we have this function fx so in testing data set please note that these images which i have here that is the cat images and the dog images these images are not there in the training data set it is very important so the data set which you use for 
ट्रेडिंग दैट इज द डेटा सेट विच यू आर यूजिंग हेयर एंड हेयर इज कॉल्ड एज ट्रेडिंग डेटा सेट बिकॉज दीज डेट दीज इमेजेस इन दिस ट्रेडिंग डेटा सेट आर एक्चुअली हेल्पिंग टू गेट दिस फंक्शन एफ एक्स सो दैट इमेजेस विच आर एक्चुअली हेल्पिंग अस टू गेट दिस फंक्शन एफ एक्स इज कॉल्ड एज ट्रेडिंग इमेजेस ट्रेडिंग इमेजेस सो दे आर बेसिकली यूज फॉर क्रिएटिंग दिस फंक्शन एफ एक्स and testing images are used for testing this function and these images will be different from the training images so this these images will all be different it will not be the same ones it will not be the same images which are used in training images that is one of the important points in machine learning algorithm so now this is basically an example of showing you the testing phase or model validation or testing so what we are doing now is we are putting these images here all these images which are shown over here are testing images and you can see now if you if you put this image what will happen based on the nose size and ear shape uh, you know this image is residing in this region same this image is residing in this region here so this region you know it's class 2 and this region you know is class 1 so you can say that you know since uh, this particular complete region is for dogs and if your image is lying here then this is the dog image so your machine learning model will detect that this is a dog image with some probability so most of the machine learning models will actually give you answers in terms of probability we will see that later but it will give you a probability of let us say 0.98% 0.98 or 98% so what it what it is trying to tell you is that uh, the model is giving prediction of 98% it, it is sure that it's a dog image maybe 2% it is wrong that it's a cat image similarly it will give you prediction score for this particular image also and you can see how this function fx is basically dividing the surface into two parts this is the first surface this is the first area and this is the second area so this is the main job of training that is to create a line which can separate the two planes now here you can see uh, we have cat images also and once you put these testing cat images you will find that they are all residing here so now the important point that comes is why this dog image is here so this is the culprit actually can anyone tell me why this dog image is appearing here why it is not here sorry sorry can you repeat of the of the dog in the image uh yeah so basically if you look closely here the dog image this particular dog has pointy images pointy pointy ears sorry uh, because of that and its nose is also small it's a very you know it's not big so because of that it happens to be at this place but it's a dog image so what is this creating it's creating an error so we will understand like whenever we say error is created that means these type of uh, you know features will create error in your system and we have to minimize this error that is the main objective how to minimize this error so that we can get to 100% accuracy but it's not true always we cannot achieve 100% accuracy we have we will be close to it like 99.8 99.6 99.7 but we cannot go and achieve 100% accuracy it's not possible there will be some images like this which can create errors into the system and similarly these type of errors are the are the are the problem problematic cases because of which you know you know tesla will also you know can have a crash if it goes for autopilot mode so so we have to you know we cannot avoid these errors but we can minimize them that is the that is the main uh, you know job of machine learning uh, 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 field that is errors will be there that is for sure but we can minimize them to very small extent that is the uh, you know main key take away from these slides again uh, if you see this block diagram this block diagram i wanted to show because it 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 actually it actually covers all the story that you will find in machine learning so you have training data you feed it to the model you have some outputs predicted predicted by this model 
and this output will actually go into a loss function and uh, I will not go into the details here but uh, we will consider this later on but uh, you can see how prediction of the output and the actual output which is there from the input data the loss function is created between the two and how this loss function is going to feed into this optimization method which will take this loss function inside and will train the model I, I will explain all these later on so this is just a you know showing you what exactly is going on in training the models that we have here like you know you want to train this right so that is the that is the thing which I was showing here so basically this optimization methods which we will be using it will train the model so that it will give you correct predictions as the output uh, so I'm not going to the details of this now because it will confuse you so but the important thing is this is the this is the uh, you know r uh, uh, main uh, force actually most of the blocks will remain common throughout in all the machine learning uh, algorithms which we will be discussing in the coming classes we will come back to come back to this slide later on right now no okay so there are different type of machine learning algorithms which we will uh, see here in this course first is the supervised learning in this supervised learning what will happen is we will have you know uh, some training data set like for example here we have images of a alphabet and what we want to uh, predict is that our model should predict that this particular images which we are having here it is an a so it should predict us uh, it should give us the result that it's an a alphabet from these uh, images which are given over here in supervised learning what happens is we actually along with this images a we actually give them another information which is uh, called as extra information or labels these labels are in the format of y in case of machine learning models and these images are called as x all the training images are represented by x and all the labels corresponding to the corresponding to these images are called as y so uh, basically what we are trying to do here is we are trying to teach the model with the extra information which is given over here which we say that you know whatever images that you will feed into this model we will say that they are a alphabets so we are actually attaching the labels to these images we are telling the model that this is a so once uh, once we feed this x and y to the model the model will be trained to these images it will easily recognize uh, a alphabets so note that supervised is coming because of this label y we are actually providing as a supervised you know we are supervising uh, this model by giving extra information that is these are a alphabets so that's why it is called as supervised learning so now once the model is trained if I pass a image which is like this you know and I have I have you know intentionally created with a different color because all these colors here is blue like you know most of uh, all these alphabets are basically of blue color so I have created a dark blue color here just to tell you that this is the testing image and it's not there in this image set so this is a testing image and it's not there in the training data set so if I feed this image into this model so it should also give me result that it's an A so basically this model is trained on supervised learning approach and why supervised learning means you are actually providing information to these images adding information to these images and telling the model that these are these images which are getting uh, you know trained by you are a images so so the extra information which we are giving it to the images are termed as labels and we denote it by y and training images are denoted by x any questions here related to supervised learning no okay. anyone else like if you have any questions you can ask uh, the important point is like you know I, I it's very difficult for me to see the chat window so in case if you have any questions I, I will normally ask in between a lot of times so in case if you have you can ask me in between anytime 
ओके सो नाउ वन ऑफ द कैटेगरीज ऑफ सुपरवाइज लर्निंग इज कॉल्ड एज रिग्रेशन सो रिग्रेशन प्रॉब्लम्स आर लाइक यू नो वी विल अंडरस्टैंड द मैथमेटिक्स ऑफ दिस इन द कमिंग स्लाइड्स बट वट हैपन्स इन द रिग्रेशन प्रॉब्लम्स इज दैट यू ट्राई टू यू नो फिट अ मॉडल इन द डेटा पॉइंट्स विच आर गिवन टू यू सो दीज आर द डेटा पॉइंट्स रैंडम डेटा पॉइंट्स अवेलेबल हेयर विच इज बेसिकली गिविंग यू अ शेयर प्राइस हेयर वर्स इज द रेवेन्यू जनरेटेड सो यू कैन सी देर आर लॉड ऑफ डेटा पॉइंट्स एंड वट वी आर ट्राइंग टू डू इज वी वॉन्ट टू फिट अ मॉडल हेयर which can actually help us in predicting the revenue predicting the share price uh, uh, share price for a fixed revenue so uh, so what we are trying to do is we are actually trying to fit a model onto this training images so you can see that these all all are training images or training data points not images but training data points so here once you do a training you can see you have created this model which is we are calling is at fx so this is uh, fx is created once we train this under the model training uh, you know category so once we train you will get fx now comes the validation part that is testing part so this is the new company revenue which we want to predict and please note that this revenue is not there you know it's not there so we this is the new revenue which we want to predict so based on this you can you know you know use this particular line and you can estimate the corresponding share price by projecting it onto the y line so this will be the share price for this new revenue which is not there in the training set so this is the testing revenue point so all the all the problems based on you know these type of situations where you are actually predicting something is coming up in the category of regression so these regression problems lie in the category of supervised machine learning any questions here related to this okay i will not go here into details of this because this will be covered later on otherwise it will confuse you another category of supervised learning is classification so as i have shown you earlier the cats versus dogs example so that is the example of classification so here you can see we have cats let us say these are the cat images and these are the dog images you can see how this fx is created which is separating the two and now if you have a testing sample like this then you can easily predict it that this is lying in for this category so because this point is in this uh, area so we can say th this point is lying in the class c2 so this is a uh, classification under the supervised learning approach and uh, this is giving you a practical example of classification where you can you know when whenever if you have a dslr camera you can you know see that on this live screen you can easily you know have a bounding box of faces you know uh, on this live camera if you have enabled that feature so you can see the images will have bounding boxes so that uh, they can detect the faces and in the earlier cameras we ha also had a smile shutters so if a person is smiling then the shutter of this dslr camera will automatically you know uh, will be activated and it will click the photo so this is basically a smile shutter uh, feature and this is the face detection feature so both these features will have classification algorithm running into this dslr camera classification algorithm will be running inside this dslr camera so that is basically this thing which is shown over here so you can see you know we will create bounding boxes for the face images and we will create training samples of that so the training samples we will collect for multiple face images and they will all be located in this plane and for the non training faces also for non faces also we will collect the data and all that data will be lying here so these are all non faces and these are all faces what is the objective here our objective is to create a function fx which can actually separate the face from non face so once we are able to create this fx function this is the fx function which is actually inbuilt in this dslr camera so once you once you pass the image later on then it will detect whether this face is lying on this part so it will detect that and it will create a bounding box around it 
so so this is the practical application of uh, uh, face detection using uh, also called as object detection so it also comes in the category of uh, <coughs> of uh, you know supervised learning so you are actually supervising that whether this sample is a face or non face because you are attaching a label also corresponding to that you are attaching a label y is equal to 1 equal to 1 for face values and y equal to 0 and y equal to 0 for non face values so this is the extra information that you are attaching with the training samples so these are x which are the training samples here and these are also x training samples so you are attaching extra information that's why it comes in the category of supervised learning any questions okay so for today's class uh, i think i'm done in the next lecture we will go further and see uh, more insights into what different kind of learning problems we have and then we will go further and see what we can do okay any any questions here sir yes sir so for both the given data we can plot both the graphics uh, or regression and classification is that possible for both the data uh, like you know same, same data for the same data we can plot different of models of regression and classification yes we can we can do that the only thing that will change is the uh, the function that you are using because normally you know uh, just a minute if you see here depends upon the problem actually which you are working on so uh, any 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 problem that you have in your mind like uh, like why you are asking that because no the, mm. the gpd itself there is a image of you know, dogs and cat okay and the classification side there is a uh, face recognition example so i thought we can uh. you know, combine uh no but uh, why, so see the thing is why you want to estimate something like you know uh, like classification and regression in regression normally we estimate something right so in this case of face and non face what what you are trying to estimate here that is the important thing you are not estimating anything right so you cannot you cannot use regression here right regression is what regression is that you provide some sample point and for that point you will get some value out right this is regression but classification is separating between the two classes this class or this class so you cannot use the same data for both it depends upon the nature of the application where you are applying so if the nature of the application is such that you want to estimate some price or you want to estimate the price of the house or something like that then you have to go for regression only but in case of classification you are trying to make a decision between two classes whether it's a c1 or a c2 you cannot use same data for both the applications until unless you are very specific like i don't know uh, such a kind of application where we can use both these algorithms together at the same time i do not know that okay sir any other question okay so if there are no questions so what we will do is we will close this class today in the next class we will go further deep into uh, you know different algorithms that we are using and then we will move on to specific algorithms and learn each of these algorithms in detail later on okay thank you for attending the class today thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you sir 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 thank you sir